Hello and welcome to chapter 9, lesson 4. Today we're going to be using models to add unlike fractions. Now yes, I did skip 2 and 3. They were adding fractions with like denominators and I was feeling from the pretest that we already know a lot about that. Um, I'll do a quick example and you kind of get, get the lowdown here. 1 fifth plus 2 fifths we just add the numerators. We would get three-fifths, right? Because the bottom really talks about the size of the piece. And then the top talks about how many we're talking about. So if I have one-fifth and then I add two more fifths in there, now I have three-fifths. Same goes for subtracting. If I was going to do seven-eighths minus three-eighths, I would have four eighths left over. Or, to simplify, one half. Okay, so today we're going to be using um, kind of drawing pictures so we can understand how to add and subtract, oh sorry, add fractions with unlike denominators. Uh, let's read this quick. Unlike fractions have different denominators. Before you can add unlike fractions, one or both of the fractions must be renamed. So that's finding common um, equivalent fractions so that they can have a common denominator. Let's take a look, see. To finish building a birdhouse, Jordan uses two boards. One is half foot long, the other is a fourth foot long. What is the total length of the boards? So first step, we're going to model each fraction using fraction tiles. Now, that was, this would be great if we were in class and I could get these out for you. But we're not. So we're going to look at the pictures here and we're going to place them side by side. So notice if I have half fraction tile, it's bigger than a fourth fraction tile. And I can take that half fraction tile and I can split it into two. So now I have two-fourths is the same as one-half, and I have another fourth, right? So these two-fourths, if I look at that, if I were divide by two, divide by two, I would have one-half. Same goes. If I'm trying to figure out how many fourths I should put in, I have one-half, and I want a denominator of four because that's what my smaller piece is. I just know I need to multiply by two, multiply by two to get two-fourths. Now I can do two-fourths plus one-fourth to get three-fourths, which is what I get when I get to the bottom down here, which is kind of cool. We're just kind of trading out, and we're wanting to make equal trades by using equivalent fractions. Okay, so if, oh, look at this. Find the fraction tiles that will match the length of the combined tile. Line them up below the model. So we have a picture of it right here, I guess. Um, and then count. There are three one of the one-fourth fraction tiles in all. One, two, three. This represents the fraction three-fourths because I have three one-fourth tiles. So one-half plus one-fourth is actually three-fourths. That's so neat. The total length of the boards is three-fourths of a foot. Okay, let's go to the next example here. Muna, not sure if I'm saying that name right, but Muna's family ate two thirds of a strawberry pie. Brendan's family ate three fourths of a different strawberry pie. How much did they eat all together? So notice the top row here is taking two thirds plus three fourths. Do you see how, how we're doing that? Two thirds we're saying is one third plus one third. Three fourths is one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. Okay, so now I have to get a common denominator. And I notice I could break them both into twelfths. Okay, so how many twelfths do I need to make two thirds? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're breaking up into eight twelfths, 
And then for three fourths, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine twelfths. Cool. So if I'm going to add up eight twelfths and nine twelfths, I'm going to get a total of 17 of the 1 12 fractions or 17 twelfths. Now it says change this improper fraction into a mixed number so I can do numerator divided by the denominator. One's going to go in there minus 12. I have five left over. Then there are five out of 12 total pieces left over. So that's my fraction, one and five twelfths. Notice the remainder is your numerator always, and what you're dividing by is your denominator always. So they ate one and five twelfths strawberry pies all together. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah, we could also do this way where I take 17 twelfths is the same as saying 12 twelfths plus 5 twelfths. Uh, this is the same as 1 plus 5, oops, 5 twelfths. So I have 1 and 5 twelfths. So I'm just kind of reiterating this piece right here. So let's do some more problems. In the first activity, how does the denominator of the sum 3 fourths compare to the denominators of the addends? 1 half and 1 fourth. So we have a 4 here and a 4 here, but a 2 here. Um, I'm just going to say I needed to change. the 2 to a 4 in order to be able to add the fractions. In the second activity, how does the denominator of the sum 1 and 5 twelfths? Compared to the denominators of the add-ins, look at this. 3 times 4 equals 12. So we multiplied. The two denominators. To get the product. Oh, that's a sum, isn't it? I thought we were multiplying, sorry. I was talking multiplying, it should be sum, to get the sum. Boop. Okay, explain to a friend. Well, I guess you guys are going to have to be my friends. I'm going to explain it to you. Use your answers from exercises one and two to predict the denominator of the sum of one third and one fourth. Explain. Well, I know that 3 and 4, in order to add them, because I have a 3 and 4 here, in order to add them, I'm going to have to multiply. So the denominator of the sum is going to be 12. All right, so this is from the homework. So if you flip forward two pages or so, you should see these on the bottom of the homework page. Let's get started. Find the sum, which is meaning we're gonna add, using the fraction tile shown, right? In simplest form. Okay, so I see I'm adding one half to one fourth. We did this one already, but I guess we're gonna do it again. Um, so I can change out the one half for two one fourth tiles, and then I'm going to get an answer of three fourths. So my answer is three fourths. Here I'm doing one half plus one sixth. So notice how I look at my one half and I say, okay, can I make it one sixth? Yeah, I can. Look at what's half of six? It's three. So I have to add one more on there. So I have four six. 
Oh, but I need to simplify. I can divide by 2, divide by 2, and get 2 thirds. Nice. So my answer is 2 thirds. Okay, let's look some more here. Use math tools. Draw models to solve exercises 3 through 6. We're starting with 3, you write in simplest form. After school, Maurice walks one third of a mile to the park and then walks half a mile to his house. How far does he walk from the school to his house? Now, I'm going to remind you of my friend, the 10 and 2 um, strategy for solving problems because kids always get mixed up when there's a fraction there and they think, what am I supposed to do? Because it's like not, not common to me. So let's replace these fractions with 10 and 2 and see if we can figure it out with that to tell us am I going to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. So if I replace it with 10 and 2, I would say after school, Maurice walks 10 miles to the park and then walks 2 miles to his house. How far does Maurice walk from school to his house? Notice how that makes things a lot easier. And you say, oh, well, he's walking 12 miles. Easy. Okay, that's how we're going to know. Well, I, I added 10 and 2. So now I need, no, I need to add 1 third and 1 half. Okay, so if I'm going to add, this is kind of tricky here because I don't have my fraction tiles. One half, and we know that one third is a little smaller, and one third. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm going to need to do sixths. So I'm going to break one third in half, and I know that's going to make a one sixth. One sixth. Two sixths. And here's what I can do to check. Divide by 2, divide by 2 equals 1 over 3. Yep, same thing. Okay, so now I need half, and I need my denominator of 6. Yeah, I drew this one way too big because I'm supposed to have 3. So <laughs> this is not good. Let me shrink it down a bit to make it a little better here. Okay, so I need to break this into 3. Still a little, little big, but... One sixth, one sixth, and one sixth. So I'm trading out three sixths for one half and two sixths for one third. So now I can notice that I have one, two, three, four, five sixths of a mile for my answer. Okay. I really wish we had fraction tiles, but we don't. So you just have to bear with me here, okay? Let's look at the next one. Ricky took a survey in the fifth grade, found out that two thirds of the students ride the bus to school and one fourth of the students walk. What fraction of the fifth grade students either ride the bus or walk to school? Great, for this one we are gonna have to do 12 because we know when we have a denominator of four and three, you have to do 12. So let's get started here. So I'm going to put down a one third, two one thirds, and then I need a one fourth, which is going to be a tad bit smaller. Okay. So now I need to put twelfths down here. Okay, so I'm going to do the conversion mathematically. One fourth, I want the answer to be a 12. So I need to multiply by 3. So I do the same to my numerator. So I need to get 3 twelfths in my 1 fourth. That's not so bad. 1 twelfth, 1 twelfth, 1 twelfth. So that means I need to get 4 into my one-thirds. So I'm going to cut it in half, cut those in half, cut it in half, cut those in half, and one-twelfth, one-twelfth, one-twelfth. You know the drill. One-twelfth. Okay, so let's see how many twelfths I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I have to walk, oh sorry, 11 twelfths of the students walk. 
or bus to school. So that would be most, right? 11, 12 is almost every single kid. Just a few must get a ride maybe. All right, that's all I have for you today. Tomorrow we're gonna to be doing this mathematically. Our next lesson, we're gonna be doing this mathematically, which hopefully will be a little easier than having to think about how I'm gonna draw out my models, but I think this is a really good representation for you guys to practice. So give it a shot, and I will talk to you later. Bye.